Hi, I'm Stephen Downs. Richard Byrne the other day had a short video about how to convert a video file into an audio file so you can use it for podcasting or something like that. I'm going to do the same thing in this video, but where he used a Macintosh computer, I'm going to use Windows, and where he used an application called GarageBand, I'm going to use a command line utility called FFmpeg. I'll show you how all this works beginning to end. So let's begin. We're going to go to the FFmpeg website. So here it is, ffmpeg.org. And we're going to get our software. So just click on download. And now we're going to get the Windows packages. So it's got Windows builds here. I'm going to click on Windows builds. And it's going to give me some versions and stuff. Pick the stable version, which in this case is 4.2. Pick the right architecture. I'm going to pick Windows 64 bit, and we don't care about the linking. So I'm going to download this build just by clicking here. It's going to give me one of these little pop up windows. Open with, I could just save it, but I'm going to open it with Windows Explorer, and there it is. Now, this is a zip file, so I'm going to use Windows to extract this zip file. I could extract it pretty much anywhere I want. I'm going to extract it, oh, I don't know, maybe into my home directory. So let's go to my home directory and I'll create a subdirectory called FFmpeg. And so where's my subdirectory? FFmpeg. And then I'll select this folder and I'll extract. So, uh, I've already done this once to test, so you won't see this, but there we go. So, that's all I'm doing is extracting, and now, when I go into that subdirectory, I see bin, doc, presets, etc. I don't need most of this, but I do need the location of this bin directory. Here's the FFmpeg exe, that's the actual program that will run. I'm going to click once in this address bar here and get a nice neat uh, version of the directory and I'm going to copy that. So I just highlight it and then I right click and hit copy. I could also use control C but this is a bit clearer. Now what I want to do is I want to add this directory to my path. What the path is is uh, it's a the thing that tells Windows where to look for programs. So I've added this program here. I need to tell Windows, look in this directory for this program. Here's the easiest way to add something to your path. I'm going to open up uh, whatever this thing here is called. And I'm going to open up my, my settings, Windows settings. You know, it's the, the little gear box. And in this find the setting, I'm just going to type path. Real simple. And the option comes up here, edit the system environment variables. So I'm going to click on that. So now I've got the system properties thing. And in here, I've got a little button that says environment variables. I'm going to click on that. And then the specific environment variable I want to click on is path editing the path. So there we go. So now I can click on edit to edit the path and then click on new to add a new path. I'll paste using control V the path that I've just added or that I've just copied rather and then I click OK. And I click OK again because I'm done adding it to my path. I click OK again because I'm done with the settings and close out the settings and I'm all done. So, OK, now my program is installed. How do I use it? The way I use it is I'm going to use PowerShell. So let me uh, close this and now I'm going to open up. I'm going to use the uh, file icon and open up the uh, file explorer. This is my home directory and I have a video in my home directory. Here it is. It's called input.mp4. 
obviously a video. It's in fact, you might recognize it as a video that I created yesterday. So this is what I want to convert in PowerShell. So let me open up PowerShell. Here's Windows PowerShell. If you can't find it, uh, look along the side here for Windows Accessories. Uh, no, actually, I think it's in, in its own thing, isn't it? Uh, Windows PowerShell, there it is. Uh, kind of hard to see on this video, unfortunately. But it's Windows PowerShell. And there it is. And then Windows PowerShell, just take the top one and you can click on that. But I've just saved it because I use this all the time. So I've just saved it on my start menu. So there's Windows PowerShell. Um, and I use this to execute any kind of command line program that I want to run. So uh, the first thing I want to do is test whether FFmpeg works. And the way you do that is just type in FFmpeg and see if you get anything. There we go. Uh, I got instructions on how to use it instead of an error. If I get an error, uh, I haven't loaded it on my path properly, but I have instructions on how to use it, so great. Um, so now let's go back to the uh, FFmpeg homepage that we started at, and here it tells me how to use FFmpeg to do conversions. So this dollar sign, that just stands for all of this stuff here, right? So anytime you see a dollar sign, what it means is all of this. So my command, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> okay, so my command that I'm going to run is ffmpeg hyphen i input dot mp4 output. Now it says dot avi here. That's a way of creating a different type of video. But I'm going to change that because I want mp3 as audio output. So I've copied that. Now I'm going to paste it here, or you could just type it in. Um, now I'll change this MP3. So FFmpeg hyphen I input, that's my input video file. Output.mp3 is my output audio file, and I'm going to hit enter. Now watch how fast this is. Um, and away it goes. I had to type yes there because I already did it once testing for this video. I could have removed it, but oh well. So here we go. Uh, this video that I'm converting to audio, it's an hour long video, but it's running this conversion at 65 times the actual speed. Uh, it's already up to 24 minutes, 25 minutes. So as you can see, it's very fast. That's because it's not resampling the audio. It's not playing the audio to itself and then saving it as a new audio file. It's rather looking at the original MP4 file, just stripping off the video layer and saving the audio layer. So we're at 49 minutes, 50 minutes, we're almost done. 54, 55, we're almost done. This is an hour long video that we've converted. And there we go. We have converted our audio, or sorry, our video to audio. Let's test that. Here's the input MP4, here's the output MP3, and I'm going to play it, and I'll just skip well, ahead a bit. I installed something globally. You should be able to hear and that. And I go to write an application. And there we go. I've converted my audio to video. The, I don't need to install FFmpeg anymore. You only ever need to do that once. Now, any time. I want to convert video to audio, I just open up PowerShell, I run that little command, and it's done. Uh, FFmpeg is worth looking at uh, in more detail. It's a Swiss army knife uh, for audio and video uh, conversions and other activities. Definitely worth a look. Uh, and it's open source and free. You don't have to pay for it. So wonderful. That's it. That's the video. Thanks everyone. Talk to you again. I'm Stephen Dance.